All right, here we go. Yo. Whoa. Oh. I should <gasps> I should turn my external speakers down when I'm, you know, recording. <laughs> Minor details. Ah. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 75 for Friday the 8th of April 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that guy that I finally got framed right in the right picture and he doesn't have a four second delay, that's Kent. How you doing, man? Uh, I was doing awesome this whole week until about 30 minutes ago and now I've got a cold allergy something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess. That sounds I right. So I, yeah, I wonder I, uh, I wonder if our guests have allergies. Yes. Let's ask them. We have Ash and Chris from the chat realm, also known as Snowshoe and Chris Ronan. Hello, Internet. Oh, I guess I should do that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? I I What's up? How's it going? Uh, uh, you know. Just uh, just floating around the Internet, you know, Not doing our feel. thing. Having good times. You two look cozy, like... Are you sitting well, on the same chair? It is a small... It's nice and snug, yeah. Well, you see, we're in this box. Uh-huh. And so... Can we call our this... apartment? No, no, this box right here. This box. Oh, this box. Oh, this, box. box. Yeah, this box. You know, it's cozy. Anyway, yeah, this is this is, this is is Shoes Battle Station. Yeah, it's built for one. Yes. We yeah. talked earlier about how I tripped on wires. Oops. Oh. Mm-mm-mm. So... And I... I, I... I've caught the, the the look a couple times too because I have unplugged things. Yeah, you unplugged <laughs> the computer like twice. Yeah. I'm still not. So happy this about. is now a uh, couples counseling show. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's about time. Let's start. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Someone so needs to hear our bullshit. We uh we we can guarantee that neither Kent nor I have any qualifications in any way, shape, or form about relationships. So nope. this should be great. <laughs> uh, this is going to be awful. Chris, where this are your crazy. values? We need to know about your values. You need to invest <laughs> your values in this relationship. My hex uh, values? Um, about like, it's like not quite zero, zero. Zero. No, no, it starts off like... with zero. What? No, it's red. It's <laughs> RGB. Yeah, so, the, so it's red. So it's like 68. <laughs> and then it's zero. And then maybe there's some blue in there. Okay. Oh, Amos, I think we have there some more go. nerds on our show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sounds awesome to me. What are, what are the odds? Yeah, yeah, weird. So weird. Like he threw a stone. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So I acquired some brewing equipment this Spe- week. Speaking Ooh. of nerds, you're a beer nerd. Mm-hmm. I, you you I just am. took another uh, uh, another big step in your beer nerdness. Yeah. So I've I've brewed a few batches in my day, but really small yeah. batches, like five gallon batches, or uh, one gallon, two gallon. You know, I don't know, small batches. Well, now I have the capability to like mass brew like 15 gallons at a time kind of thing and so i'm mass gonna, I'm brewing gonna... 15 gallons at a time <laughs> yeah well hey for a home brewer yeah 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 that's a hell of a lot more than than two gallons <laughs> so <laughs> I, just, I just need to know when the, when the spiced meat is coming out that's all i need oh well yeah maybe maybe i'll go meat down that no, no, but it's very closely related. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a very uh, similar no, no, process. No. There are separate <laughs> things. There's mead, there's cider, and then there's disgusting, ugly beer. <laughs> so there's honey beer, aka mead. Uh, <laughs> it's not- no, it's honey beer, it apple a, beer, and beer beer, huh? Um, so I'm gonna start. If Ash likes it, it's not beer. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right, I see the I see the distinction yeah. now. So I'm gonna start brewing a lot more, and I've got now also like a giant not i wouldn't i don't know if i'd call it a kegerator but it's a refrigerator that's been converted to hold several mini kegs like the you know the the like cylinders the that barrel? yeah well no not those but like you know at a fast food restaurant where you had the the soda fountains yeah. with the like the pepsi or the coke or whatever comes in it's mm-hmm. it's those it's like the tall cylinders nice i can hold four you know, in this fridge and there, it's it's all set up with the the so uh, like, like, like a quarter keg, right? The little thin ones. That's what or, I said. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, quarter kegs, oh. right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and, wait, I know. 
so it's all hooked up with C with CO2, so I can inject CO2 directly into it, and I can have four spouts right right there in my own but, personal bar. When, no. when I was a kid, they used to do supposed to be my dream, but it involves soda. Now you have a soda stream, I'm like, eh, I'm 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 set, I'm good. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. But no. so if I start doing this, I'm gonna have to start naming my beers. Mm. So of I'm gonna course. be looking for I'm gonna be looking for ideas, not just for the the names of the beers themselves, but also for like what should I call my brewery? What 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 should it be called? So I want to oh, know if you're gonna not beer. <laughs> I, 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 I want to know uh, <laughs> if you're gonna review your shitty beers, the trials that you have before you get there. If you're gonna review those on uh, on ratebeer.com. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't really work because you can add beers to Rate Beer and you can even review them. But Rate Beer staff actually mm -hmm. goes through and and reviews the new submissions. Mm -hmm. And if it's not something that's like a catalog, no shit, commercially available beer, they will delete it. Oh, that so, sucks. Well, yeah. so, I, so I could do that, but it only lasts about a day. And also, like, even the microbrews probably don't last super long unless they've been established for a while. Yeah, like, it's, uh, it's kind of like the small state stuff. Well, you're in New Mexico, so how's your uh, homebrew or microbrew, rather, market? Uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about the beer market in New Mexico. <laughs> it's almost yeah. non existent here. It's called Moonshine. <clears throat> what? That's what there it's called. Oh, moonshine. Yeah. They sell Moonshine at the shop Ed here. But is it the moonshine commercial moonshine, yeah, or is it yeah, legit? It's the, it's, no, no, it's the it's the garbage it. commercial stuff. Yeah, no. yeah not the <laughs> shit not made in the Kentucky High Mountains. I don't care what they call it. <laughs> moonshine. It comes. It just comes in a jar, and it has a a what is it called? Masking tape. It's just masking tape, and then it'll say high proof. <laughs> it doesn't say how much proof it is. It just says high, because they, they they know it'll exactly say high how. octane. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that too. And they call it NOS, even though there's another thing that's called <laughs> NOS, which doesn't make sense. I don't know why. Uncle Jesse's special. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't drink beer, but she knows Uncle. all about the moonshine. I see where Uncle. your priorities are at. <laughs> I don't like beer. Beer's too bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the beer. There's so No, it's beer. all hops all the even, time. Even, all even the Not Your Father's root beer, that little taste of hops. Like, I'm oh, fine with man. Yeah, see, the yeah. hops are almost non-existent in that. Oh, Taste boy. It. So, Taste do you guys it. like Star Wars? Do you guys like Star Wars? I'm, um, I'm like this on the Star Wars curve. I loved Star Wars when the special editions came out. <laughs> um, I know, it, I'm the blasphemous. But then, like, um, <laughs> you know, and I, I, saw, I, I, saw all the, I saw all the prequels, and then now I'm kind of, like, over Star Wars. It's fun, but I'm not as... as it, I don't worship it like I used to. Right, wow. okay. okay. Well, I, you know... Well, The Force Awakens came out on home video this week, and I pre-ordered through Amazon to get the, yeah. you know, the, the bundle thing, the, the Blu-ray, DVD, digital thing. And the only reason I did that instead of going to a store to get it is because Amazon said it will, be, it will arrive on your doorstep on release date. Yeah. I was like, okay, awesome, cool. So release date came. <laughs> I had a package from Amazon on the front porch. I was like, "Hell yeah, Star Wars is here! I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Star Wars." Open up the package. There's no Star Wars. It's the other things that I that I ordered because I, I do the uh, subscription thing, so I get, yeah. you know, like soap and toilet paper and all all the sure. crap that I just don't want to go to the store for. All of that arrived, but no Star Wars. I'm like, son of a bitch. So I call or I I get on the Amazon support chat. Mm -hmm. They've been super helpful in the past. They solve your issue in like two minutes. You're done. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much this week. I get on there and I tell them what the issue is. And they're like, oh, okay, I would love to help you, but I got to transfer you to another department. This is, this is retail. Uh, okay, well, let me, let me tell you first how I framed the problem. I explained that I'd been looking forward for like three or four weeks now to watching Star Wars today uh, because it's released day, blah, 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 blah. And it, since I didn't get my disc, I would love it if they would cancel the order and just give me a credit for the digital version. So I just watch it on, on Amazon streaming. 
-hmm. and they're like, okay, um, yeah, I would love to help you. I can refund you, but I gotta, I have to transfer you to a different department to do the digital thing. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I have to restate the problem to the new person. They're like, oh, you, you've got the wrong department. Let me, let me switch you. I am not even kidding. This happened nine times <laughs> over an hour. I told them, I was like, you know what? I, I started to get angry at this point because I was like super, super polite through the whole thing. Like, you know, thank you for trying to help me. Blah, blah, blah. I appreciate it. I got to the point where I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. You need to put me on with the manager. And then they're like, oh, well, I, if you just give me a minute, I can try to. I was like, no. I was like, no, cancel the fucking order. Just never fucking mind. I'm done. I'm about to log off. They're like, no, 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 hold on. Manager. Manager comes on. <laughs> and she was super helpful. She's like, you know what? I just read through the entire chat thing. And I am so sorry that this <laughs> happened. This is absolutely unacceptable. We're going to fix it. So what I did was I reordered the movie for you. And I already, like, you now have the digital thing. Yay. Just, just, nice. yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Why, why did this not happen forever ago? So I was singing her praises, telling her how awesome she was, and I mm -hmm. appreciate it, et cetera, et cetera. And then right before she logged off, she said, let the force be with you. <laughs> she tried. Ruined it. She, she ruined tried. it. She tried. <laughs> oh. Hey. Can hey. You know, the effort, effort. Like, she yeah. at least so appreciated <laughs> that you had a fandom of some sort. She just couldn't you know, remember which one least, it was. At least she didn't say, like, live long, live long and prosper. Then she was <laughs> totally, you know. That would have been awesome, <laughs> yes. That would have been so much better. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Oh, She's like, man. It's one of those movies. They've been coming out very regularly. Yeah. Um, and then I know it would have been worse if she, if she would have gave you the wrong movie. Oh, well, oh that would have been worse. The wrong movie. Damn it. That'd have been great. Star Wars Episode One shows up in your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that you have no, you know how actually did all Star the prequels Trek because yeah. I'm saying she would have put Star Trek in instead yeah. of Star Wars. Okay, so that speaking of Star Wars, man, uh, I I could hear you from eight thousand miles away, uh, <laughs> spaz out when you heard that the Rogue One trailer was going to be online and you listened to it and watched it and then you sent me text messages and even though I was in a literal concrete bunker of a building <laughs> the 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 messages were like forced into my phone by pure will and and, <laughs> and like so what'd you think about that did you guys watch it R rogue i've one. seen it yeah oh my god okay before i start fanboying the fuck out what, what were your thoughts of the of the teaser who for us us you guys yeah yeah sure. so, <laughs> you go first you like it you like star wars uh, <laughs> i think it was pretty cool like it it's it's very much the same style as um the force awakens which is this weird kind of like th these have star wars movies feel like very well done fan films and not in a bad way but it's like they are very much you know very high quality a fan's take on star wars and even and this film has that same kind of a vibe to it um and it looks like it could be a very interesting story. Yeah. And a very yeah. interesting kind of... I, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I have one reservation. Uh-huh. What's that? I don't want to know anything more about the movie. Sure. Okay. Agreed. That's fair. Ah. Uh, okay. Like, the, it, the teaser gave me just enough to really whet the appetite for the storyline. And, and, okay, well, this, this is actually what we've heard it was going to be and such and such and blah and blah. And there's another... Another strong female lead, which is always mm -hmm. appreciated. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to know more. Mm. I liked it on The Force Awakens because they kept all the major points pro uh, secret. I loved it on uh, Deadpool when I got trailer after trailer after trailer, and none of them gave away the storyline. You know, even though it was in the comic books, they didn't bother ruining it for those who hadn't read the comics. I don't want to know more about the story. I would like to know more about the characters and, you know, more little little bit little snippets here and there of different characters that are in it, but I don't want to know the story. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you on that. I I would like to see like one more teaser like this about halfway between now and when the movie comes out and I'll be 
I'll be good. With yeah. That. So one, of, so one of our friends, he lives in a full own, full on a Star Wars cone of silence. Like he, 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 he talks about everything, absolutely everything. Won't, won't look at uh, uh, reviews. We'll look at teasers. We'll look at anything. He's, he, he took a vow of silence from social media. Yes. <laughs> he's he's protective of that. Mm-hmm. He's like, I thought I oh was man, protected. I've gone, and yeah. like I, I threw a podcast on, and he's like, yo. They're not. They're not talking about Star Wars, are they? I'm like, I don't think they're talking. No, maybe we should just turn it on something else, huh? <laughs> like, I'm, okay. I don't think they're gonna. You know. You know. I have this really great NPR episode we haven't listened to yet. <laughs> 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 Let's listen to that one. Like, okay. Well, yeah. That's. I'll just, I yeah. guess I'll listen to it later. Well. That's how I was probably in like the last month lead up to the Force Awakens. I, I wasn't that bad. Like I didn't exile myself. But I, I was pretty careful about... You, you, well, you did exile happened. yourself from the time that uh, the, the premiere showed, you know, the, the Hollywood premiere, until oh, you yeah. saw the it, movie. Like, you weren't yeah, on Facebook, premiered, Twitter, like, and nothing. Two, yeah, like two or three days before the movie yeah. was released, it was premiered. And, yeah, I, I didn't... I pretty much stayed off the internet until I saw the movie. He's, all, he's at home twitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, okay, so my, my hot take of... Rogue One trailer is that it reminds me so much of when I was a little boy playing with action figures and this the story seems like the sort of story that that like I was making up in my head for my action figures to to play out and yeah I'm just I am so excited for this movie I oh oh and it looks like a very interesting like a, a very interesting side story that's outside of the main track um and it's not quite the same level but remember that um Star Wars game that got canceled. That was real. Um, it was good. It was going to be M rated. It was going to be about like a squad shooter. I think it was, like yeah, um, like, yeah. Like that's like I think that's the, that's the closer we're going to get to something like that, where it's like something that is in the Star Wars universe, but a little more. It has a little bit more edge to it than you're used to. I think. Right. And yeah. Because yeah. it looks like it looks like it falls outside the main storyline. And, and, and not, and not whiny Christian hating Christians in Edge, but like actually. <laughs> right. No. Agreed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what rating this is going to get. I'm, I'm guessing that it'll be PG-13, like The Force Awakens Probably. was, but I wouldn't be completely shocked if they decided to go R with this because mm -hmm. they, they're, they're trying to do like a kind of a hardline war movie, but set in the Star Wars universe. The, it'll but still uh, have stormtroopers that don't bleed. Well, The Force Awakens had a stormtrooper that bled. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for effect and for storyline. Your average stormtrooper didn't just gush out in a bunch of blood when he was blown up with a grenade. <laughs> well, I don't want that in my Star Wars, necessarily. <laughs> this is Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Which was an amazing movie, by the way. The first movie I ever bought on DVD. Really? And the first movie I ever heard in surround sound. Nice. Those two are... Oh, Saving Private Ryan, yeah. Yeah, Okay. those two are related, by the way. Yeah. My brain glitched there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, man, there are crazy things afoot in the world. Crazy yes. things. Always. Um, <laughs> and even when an issue when an issue relieves mainstream and comes back, it's it's ridiculous that, uh, you know, I'm I'm not even going to be try to pretend to be the expert on this. It's just it. I, I want to get y'all's take. Um, Gamergate <laughs> is back in headlines. Yeah, where? yeah. Wait, where? I have not seen this. <laughs> well, it, it mostly it's. That's well, I'm like, wait, why are we talking about Geary? Isn't that old? <laughs> sort of. It's, be, it, it, it's, it's being forced into headlines, and it's mostly it's the usual sites. Um, <coughs> I don't know if the Verge. It usually shows up on like the Verge and Polygon. Um, well, so like all the major internet sites got, and now mainstream media is getting a hold of it. Oh well, yeah, because it's because it, it, it's it, it's saucy. And it has it it, it has heroes and villains. It, it's it's a perfect. Oh yeah, and then we had South by so South... that South by there's all well, that yeah. discussion too. Yeah. But it, it's something. It's it's a kind of thing that that is makes a very good media story, and that's why they pick up on it every so often. Well, there was uh there was going to be a dis a panel at South by that ended up getting canceled back and... in October. Yep. Yep. Which I don't know if that <laughs> that ever came back. To that be that just feeds about. into the hype. Yep. Right. So for our listeners that aren't in the know, I guess, on Gamergate, can you give us just like a quick, like 10 sentences, 10 sentences or less, kind of just a, a quick 
who, dummies who, guide who version. counts sentences what is what is gamer <laughs> what is gamergate so we'll go we'll go we with the we'll go with the basic version is that like gamergate started at least at least in in our in our knowledge with the um gamers are dead articles that's that's a big thing that really kind of kicked it off where all of a sudden and i remember i read that that article raw and I'm like, oh, this is kind of very interesting about how, like, you know, gaming is evolving and becoming more of an art form. And then it took this really negative turn about how, um, you know, we're past the basement dwellers. And it was very kind of like, very kind of, I don't know, jabby at, at gaming culture. And I'm like, it just, it, it felt bad. And a lot of other things kind of uh, came up around the, the same time. I'm sure there's lots of references, but it just like basically ended up this this whole thing where there's been a lot there's been a lot a big negative turn in the gaming press against certain parts of gaming and a lot of and on the other side you have a bunch of gamers who kind of feel slighted by it and pushing towards the you know about journalism stuff like that and it, it's mixed up with some feminist feminism stuff it's really it's actually there's a lot of um aspects to it but it's all, but it's also like everyone a, finds their own little nuggets of things to bitch which, about. Which is why it swirls very well because it's actually, it, it's even though it seems like a small thing, it's like a perfect cross section of, of of bigger things that are kind of going on right now, like mm. culturally. So right, yeah, and that's, like you said, that's why this controversy, or I guess we would call it, or issue, is yeah. so interesting because it does cover such a a wide swath of of issues. The thing that that grabs my attention, which of course that's what the media they want to grab your attention, so they will sensationalize everything. How yeah. how big is the <laughs> the issues with like the violence and the um, like the the serious threats and like stalking issues and hacking and stuff like that? Is that a big thing, or is that just like a one or two? Well. I mean, that kind of depends. I, like, so any of the large, like, I'm gonna, like, if we bring it back, because a lot of them are hostile towards women. A lot of them are very popular. Well, maybe not popular. They're very loud, very vocal. They have a lot to gain with this sort of thing. So a lot of those women are getting threatened a lot because they are very loud and very like public. As a text crawl once said, there are heroes and villains on both sides. Um, <laughs> But um, it's it's very it's one I don't think it's one of those things you can't quite like quantify because I don't think you can say oh there's X number of people who are harassing and these people are legit. But the the thing is, all you need is one tweet to point to on on either side to say, and then that's and that's where it's it's very it's a lot of cherry picking. Like my my belief is that so ninety percent of people are moderate, ninety percent of people are. Um, are not very extreme are not very extreme but 10 percent are very extreme and 10 percent are very vocal about things 10 percent of that set to 10 percent. yeah and so and so what you what you get is on both sides between on on kind of the gaming side and kind of the the, the activist side um it's those two percent are just trying to score some points um and just and they just they just like the to do shout out a lot about and they're mis they're, i think they're misrepresenting the large middle that are kind of like in between and kind of like i agree with some of this some of this is kind of shady you know i think a lot of the bigger bigger issues are like the harassment which yeah. men tend to not see as much but you know there are those who do get harassed but they can a lot of them can kind of just shrug it off a little bit and they're just like oh trolls be trolls yo yeah um and the late in mm. women trans transgender women or regular women you know they are women doesn't really matter uh, they'll get harassed a lot, and it like they'll get threatened a lot. A lot of them get swat. Uh, swat was it? Uh, I pronounced it wrong again. Mm -hmm. Swarm, swat, swatted. So, That's yeah. it. They get swatted, which is where they uh, get where the police get called on them yeah. for a SWAT team. That that yeah. is yeah, yeah, that is awful. I thought that was Those fake when I first heard about that. <laughs> but that's yeah. just for like streamers too. This isn't necessarily for the journalism death yeah. side. Yeah, for people that don't know what swatting is, that's when like you're watching your your uh, you know your favorite Twitch streamer or whatever, and you somehow have their phone number and address or whatever. You will call the police and make up some story about some you know a murder is taking place or something like that at this address, and you know help Ooh. help come quickly. And so yeah, like no kidding, a SWAT team or at least a you know a bunch of sometimes cops it's a will SWAT team. Sometimes it's like a five-man group of, uh, or five-man, <laughs> five-men, five-people group 
of <laughs> police police officers coming to your apartment. <laughs> right, and the thing that the yeah. thing about it is the reason they do this to streamers is because during the stream you will see in real time the police come in, or at least you will hear it. You'll hear the chaos in the other room, and it's oh man! Well, it, I, it like I said, I thought it was fake. The thing. And it's all right. Yeah. And it, uh, it's, it's a lot, a lot of bad, a lot of bad vibes and bad faith, and just people trying to be dicks. Although to be fair, that's like that's sort of a a branch off of GamerGate, which sort of goes away. Yeah. From, like, the whole point of GamerGate started with journalism and its ethicalness, but, and and people find their own little snippets to bring themselves into GamerGate. It's like I'm doing this in the call of GamerGate. It's like. But you there's, are just trying to instill there, there, there's a real there's a real interesting twist that I find it because I've been because I, I got caught up in a little bit just for just for you know understanding and trying to dig into it a little bit and all and I'm not I'm 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 kind of in the middle I'm just like I don't know enough about anything to you know to to take a, a strong opinion but like um, I do know that like most of this starts in the 70s because um, there's actually a activist named Bell Hooks who. Um, was like when you hear about like seventies like active feminism stuff like that and all, she basically came up with most of the ideas that um, Sarkeesian um, goes by, and it's and it's a lot of that uh, that 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 very active feminism, the very calling people out kind of things and all. Um, and what's interesting is they had some um, a lot of clashes in the seventies with like the people that you'd expect people who were very much um, um, family values people, kind of conservative people. And you can actually find, if you look online, there's some like latent articles kind of going back and forth um, for those kinds of things. So it's interesting you fast forward and you come and, um, you know, you come up with the, the feminist frequency stuff and all. Um, so you have gamers who are just generally liberal slash libertarian ish and but very progressive and very kind of in this world. And now you have, you know, what you think is like your your home as far as like the gaming sites and all start to kind of like talk down to you and you start to see these words like microaggressions and things that are, that are these weird terms you've never heard of before. And you start to, to look into them and suddenly you find out about this feminism thing and the people who are starting to stand up and kind of take the other side are people like um, uh, Christina Hoff Summers and Breitbart. So, so, so the people who are these, these very kind of conservative slash family values things. So what's weird is that like, you had this group of kind of liberal people in gaming who were just trying to mind their business. And now that this thing has kind of stepped in and started to kind of like not trounce on the fun a little bit, but kind of be kind of heavy handed in, in pushing the values. Um, some of the people who would have been kind of on their side have actually kind of gone to these more um, conservative things because it's like, there are the people who are standing up and kind of taking our side and defending us. So you see, so if, you, if I don't know if you've seen Vote lately, but like, like I used, to, I was kind of like, oh, Vote, you know, freedom of speech. But like, if you go there, it's like a, it's, it's, it's kind of iffy, you know. It, it, it's it's very, it's very, it's a lot of conspiracy theory and a lot of, mm -hmm. um, the the worst parts of of that. You know. Yeah, and so. It, it's so hard for me to to follow this as well because, like you said, there's there's good points on each side. But yeah. the only thing, the thing that just overshadows all of it is the, is the violence and the the harassment and the scare tactics and yeah. all of that, and it it kind of, to me, it makes it very difficult to even know what people are trying to say because yeah. all I hear is I'm going to kill you, I'm going to rape you, which no, and that's, what the hell does that have to do with is, gaming journalism? Is, Nothing. Would, would, <laughs> no, and that hasn't that's and that that's a misrepresentation of everything. I think you have. <laughs> you, you have I very... think it's the sensationalization yeah, exactly. of, with the media like those who mm. like media as in not not gaming media but the media who are trying to cover this because it's a hot thing and especially on the gamer side because I think traditionally it's like there, there, there's, there's very much a thing of like, oh, if, if we're, if someone's making fun or someone's kind of coming at, it, it's like we're going to, there, there's like a defiance, right? There, there's a, there's a, we're going to, we're going to satirize it, we're going to pump it out, and we're going to kind of throw it back in a way. But I think there's a, that where usually that would be a good thing, is and it's like trying to, trying to own it and trying to be rise above it. Um, it's just adding more, more fuel to either side, and even if it's in jest, and even if it's just, you know. I don't think it's representative of most people on the other side, but there are those few who are looking for those opportunities to kind of see, 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 and point at those things. And there's always going to be that one, those people that 
that give it back because that's just the nature of, of these things. Yeah, and and that's unfortunate. It's, that's like the, yeah. the dark side of the internet. And the, and the and the only way to really neutralize it is for like I've been, I've had this this idea of like like mad moderates is like like. Everybody else just needs to just kind of say, hey, you know what? I agree with some of the stuff. Like, I think the people in the middle need to be more vocal and just and kind of and kind of drown out the assholes on the on the well, fringes. To you be sort honest. of kill it with kindness. Little because exactly. You, you find a way to get everyone to start being a little more open minded and make it more of a discussion versus pointing fingers. Yeah, because right exactly. now, right, right. because right now, no one's talking to each other. There's two separate games being played and they're scoring points on their own side, but no one's. It, it, but no, no one's interested in actually talking to each other. It's, it's not about that at all. Right. So the, the event that brought it back into the, the mainstream news last week, um, her name is escaping me, but the, uh, the woman that worked for Nintendo Treehouse, Nintendo of America Treehouse, um, what was her name, Chris? Um, I am we are looking at it right now. <laughs> I didn't even know we were going for this one. I thought we were going for the Tracer one. Um, there's been a lot of stuff lately. There's Allison been... Rapp. Yes, uh, Allison Rapp. Right. Right. Mm, so... My Google Fu is stronger than yours. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 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 the, the speedy fingers. Um, <clears throat> no, so I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm curious. The, the mess that last week's sensation kind of stirred back up, I guess... Does does that raise attention to the right things, or does that raise attention more well, toward the negativity of the whole thing? And, I, and I'm doing a quick read because I didn't even know because there's been enough things out here. Um, well, here's here's the thing, right? It's it's got to be hard for any company right now because anything that can be spun as under the under Something that light, sexist, or yeah, whatever. It, it's and it's because because right now the the um, the sensors for that are way out of they're not calibrated right and so any so anything that can be kind of fit into that story and especially if you get fired like you know what it's all it's in your interest to kind of make it about that even if it's not you know it, right. um, yeah that makes sense not, not not to be too cynical but well yeah but um i think allison rap herself is actually the one that that brought up gamergate saying that if it wasn't for gamergate i'd still have my job um, so give me so give me the give me the short version of what that Gamergate's involvement was for this one. Or maybe for, just an overall, yeah. like, how it started. Or, like, well, not over, like, she, She's a vocal feminist, and uh, yeah. they started harassing about her mood li- moonlighting things that she was doing, things that she was doing outside of Nintendo of America. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, Nintendo's saying that the Gamergate thing has nothing to do with her being fired. Yeah. Um, that's you know standard company but PR. It, whether or not it did, yeah. they're, they're going to say that. Well, maybe yeah. the, so. the thing of them saying that she has a second job probably got yeah, the well right. But so all of the dirt that was brought up about her that uh, that Nintendo used as a basis for for letting her go, like including the second <laughs> job and, and all of that. Yeah, all of this information was compiled by people that were hacking and doxing her. Yeah, and sending this information to Nintendo, right. and that's that's what. That's where she's calling in, and and that is and, and that and that's the dark side. Here's the thing: no, no, that that's shitty, and no, no matter where it comes from, that is shitty from either side. Even if even if you're doing um, it to a guy, like it doesn't matter. And 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 so and so and so the the, the point is, I think that's the thing that needs to be, like no matter what, someone's livelihood. You know, people do all kinds of things under the you know second job stuff like that and all. Um, even if you're you know, even if she's a vocal feminist or whatever, it's like it's not your business to do that shit. To, to, to try to get someone fired or lose their job. That's someone's livelihood and that's and that is taking something to a personal thing. And I know that there's 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 at least one one of the prominent things that is listed for Gamergate is very similar to this. Paying it the other way does not make it right at all. It's mm-hmm. you know Right. And right. and so and so the only the only like you have to be if if you want to kind of find the middle of an of an argument, you need to be you need to be the better person at every point. Mm-hmm. Right. I, uh, well put. Yeah. I, I agree That's... completely with what you just said. Yeah. Um, so this this is my uh, my ten second take on it. If someone is genuinely bad at their job, or doing things that uh, that are illegal, or or forcing other people to do things that that aren't uh, aren't good, that really yeah. sucks. Um, if they, if they're doing something illegal, then yeah, by all means, you know. If there's evidence out there, then put that out there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, when it comes to digging into people's personal lives, really just knock it the fuck off. You know, there's there's no reason to start digging into someone's personal life, especially when it affects their employment. Um, and even just allegations thereof can affect someone's employment. And when it comes to women in gaming and the current state of gaming and the fact that the, the boobies are getting smaller, I think it's a yep. good thing. <laughs> and it, it it needs to continue. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand. I don't know about that. Some women have very voluptuous bre- bus- busts. <laughs> the, the, this is true. I'm not you, saying all but, sizes and all shapes. On, on a uh, hashtag all all wait uh, hold on chat figure that out. Put a, put a hashtag for all boob sizes. Figure that um, out. Okay, continue. And and I don't think I don't think the so uh, this this is probably the most controversial mm-hmm. thing I'll I'll say all all month. Um, Everybody says it's the the silent majority and it's the uh, the the outliers that are most vocal and everything else. What if the middle middle is actually smaller than what people think it is? Hmm. Maybe there's just not as many. Maybe the middle is a lot thinner. Um, because they have like Trump supporters too, but that I, doesn't work. <laughs> and, and it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing with gaming too, because I think it's so. So the thing is, um, it's. Gaming, especially like male gamers and, and hardcore gamers, we have been super served for a long time, and that's not, that's not by accident. That's not that's not our fault, but that's also the market and stuff like that. So since Sega decided they were going to push, you know, you know, you know, towards the hardcore gamer years ago, those are the people who buy things, um, and no matter how much you want to open things up, they're always going to go for the people who are paying the most, spending the most money, and those are going to be the people who are passionate and kind of like things to be to push a little bit further. Um, an interesting analog is on the anime side and um, you know they have been ultra catering to like the otaku which are, which 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 like you know kind of the the, the more fan servicey stuff and the more mm-hmm. and and all that stuff some of them are very like some of them are very uh like oh we're just gonna do it and others are like oh my god yeah. we love you fans we are fans too we but, are going to make the thing that we love that you know you're gonna but, love and, but, and and there's make- been a couple of those in there Awesome. But it also, but it also makes sense, and, and it turns a lot of people up. But at the same time, they're serving an audience that pays for stuff, that buys merchandise, especially when things are coming less and less based on marketing. So, mm-hmm. you know, so 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 first of all, so first of all, acknowledge that that exists. And second, but if you want gaming to be a bigger thing, and I, if we, the funny thing is, right before this thing broke, there was a whole lot of advancements for, in the whole gaming is art thing and art games and stuff like that and all. Uh, and it was, and, and even things like things like Braid were hot and all, and you know. It's it was it's a thing that's still happening, um, and what what happens is if you want your world to get bigger and if you want and if you want people to come into it, it has to change or it's going to or at least on the outsides you're going to still have your mm-hmm. parts of it, but you know as people come into it there's going to be new things that come into it. So I think the problem with gaming is that it's been such the same thing for so long because it's always had to be a commercial product. Like you had to sell console, you had to sell sixty dollars games to make the console viable, and PCs were like a little blip now. Mm-hmm. Now PCs are cheap. You have Steam, and so now you can do basically like what I consider to be like little novels for games and stuff like that. And all people can do stories and do art, and they're not always going to look like games that we are used to, and they're going to be like you know what people call walking simulators. But like for mm-hmm. that person, that is the way that they can express an idea that they couldn't express before, mm-hmm. whether it was through art through, and so. Uh, that doesn't mean they should get a nine out of out of ten review. And there's lots of parallels to like Oscar winners, which you know are artsy, but no one ever watches. But you're gonna have to share that. You're gonna have to share that space if you want it. If you want the medium to grow. Mm-hmm. And if we uh, we tout it to the other side, you know, if we bring up the boob comment again, yeah. this because it's just something we talked about, and we can kind of grab grab onto <coughs> puns. <laughs> um, <laughs> There are these games that, you know, where we've criticized the the character models and stuff, a lot of the people who are making them are women. And, you know, I feel that, you know, it's like, well, what about their meanings? Like, what if, like, they put a lot of work into creating <laughs> that model. And it's like, this is the woman that they thought of. Should they be chastised for the thought of their unrealistic view of women, too? Well, Which then you can pull it back out. Right, right, right. But, like... You know, it's you know there there are women in the industry. Well, it's even, not like it's all male dominated. Or, or even the NASA guy with the shirt, who everyone got been all shirt about. The, the thing is, oh yeah. yeah and so so the big thing yeah. is, like I guess you know 
if you want if you want to say hey that's a little bit too much there are ways to say it but like it's a heavy hand in this it's like assume assume i guess i guess assume that people are acting in good intentions most of the times and if and if something's a little bit off it's like okay you know you mention it but you don't come you know again like calls for the nasa guy to get fired because he wore a shirt that had you know um, some suggestive art on it. Also, I'm so yeah. happy at Movie Man Lucas. He posted a link so, for, so which one for is... the Tracer Victory pose. This. So which so one's the one... original? So I'm gonna wait for you guys to open it. Oh, oh. So the one on the left is the original one that people were bitching about. The one on the right was the fixed one. Really? And yes. That's the fixed one. Yes. And That's I'm the like, fixed one. this is great. Because, okay, I don't. I haven't played Overwatch, but the what one I can looks tell. More suggestive. Well, what I can tell from the character... No, but here's how they framed it. It's like, you know, this was very out of character of her. We're going to fix it. Thank you guys for letting us know. And they fixed it. Like, this looks like the character... Like, I haven't played her, but from what I've seen, I'm like, this looks like her character now. I don't know. They're, they're... Her butt's sh less showy, and it's also character appropriate. There's an anecdote from, like, when um, South Park was submitting Bigger, Longer, Uncut for ratings that they would get, like, all kinds of, like, you can't have this and this and this, and then they put more stuff in it, and it would get a lower rating. <laughs> so <there's that> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Tenki brings up a good point in chat. Uh, she says, I'm a game design... I'm in game design school. When the media comes, they always ask, do you think there's enough women in the industry? We usually replied, those who want to be, be there are there. What mm -hmm. else can we do? Yeah. Right, right. You know, and talking about the different types of games and, you know, this this type of game serves this audience and this type of game serves this audience and some games are artsy and some games are not traditional. What we th There's room for all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially today, you, they don't have to compete for shelf space. It's available on this wonderful thing mm -hmm. that, we in, that Al Gore invented about 20 <laughs> years ago called the Internet. Yes, <laughs> we did that. Mm -hmm. Is there a trademark? <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just I don't personally I don't I don't understand the controversy at all. It the, just well, I mean the big controversy with gamery is just that the ethicalness of of game journalism, which is it all started with. Hold on, <laughs> I gotta get names. Right. Zoe well, Queen. no. She made yeah. she made a she made a, uh, a a a, a For, novel. A novel based game, I, I'm gonna and take, then you know, people thought that she paid off. The I'm, gonna take a weird, I'm gonna take a weird stance. Stuff. Who cares about not, not saying who cares about game journalism, but again, no. like, game journalism is weird because it's for a commercial media, yeah. and, so, and so we're not we're not talking about we're not talking about politics, we're not talking about news, which has its own thing where they need to be unbiased. It covers a commercial medium, something that is, and they're always going to be they're always going to be right next to the advertisers, so you're going to that that that's part of it. So to say that they're 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 biased. Like you don't, I guess, no, no one's expecting unbiased reporting from, I guess, I don't know car companies except for, ex or, or like like car and auto mag, except for just uh -huh. to tell you that the car, the car's not going to be on sick. You know what I mean? They're going to be, they're going to be talking to the reps. They're going to be driving the cars. That's just how that works. Um, right. And the other thing is, there's a weird kind of a secret that like tech companies um, like that hardcore base because they're very passionate, but it's always kind of a like we like you guys, but. Kind of a thing. We it's don't like, want to tell you everything. <laughs> no, because like like you can see it with Dig, you can see it with Reddit, you can see it with gaming. They they spend a lot of money, but they they're also very vocal and very and you know can be very fickle. And so there's like it's like oh can we have this can we have all this money without this passionate fan base, you know, or without this 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 fan base that reacts to every little thing that like it gets upset if a game gets a nine point five instead of a instead of a ten. And so I think. I think with the, I think with the Gamergate thing and with the the feminism thing, I think a lot of these these um, publications that maybe saw they saw maybe they might have saw an out, where maybe hey maybe we can expand our audience and expand our reach and you know to a broader base by covering these stories, even though they might kind of slight our audience, but like the money and the the money's out there in their mind. You know these these are the these are the people who bring the clicks. You know because at the end of the day, it's based more on advertising. So true. Yep. So Amos, it, Amos, you got any words for this? Um, <clears throat> my mom will never go to Newegg and buy a computer. Yeah. Why? Because Newegg yeah. caters to those who spend money there on a very niche area of the market, uh, selling you know parts and uh, 
some packages, but mostly just the pieces that you need to build your own computer. They don't cater to, you know, that's what Dell's for. You go to Dell. My mom will go to Dell and buy a computer. No, no. She goes yeah. and buy an e-machine from Walmart. No, she <laughs> works at Walmart. She'll be, she wouldn't be caught dead buying a computer. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. Um, get a discount. <sighs> Can't she? I don't yeah. know. No, I don't she, know Walmart. She knows better. Yeah, I think Walmart. I think Walmart does mm-hmm. discount. Um, I don't know about electronics. But that being said, yes, the companies that are making the games are going to cater to the market that is buying the games. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were in high school, was it, uh, uh, what are those damn fighting games that had all the boobies just popping out everywhere? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Was dead or Alive? Dead or volleyball? Alive. Dead yeah. or Alive. That's the one I was thinking of. Wasn't yeah, overly, I mean, wasn't really a big fan of it then, but I'll be damned if I don't go get lap dances in GTA 5, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's, 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 yeah. it's funny as hell. It's, it's awesome. It's part of the game. Yeah. So it's part of the culture of the game. Yes. And, you know, DOA follows that the, it's a very Japanese kind of line of game. So it's like, especially oh. when you get to the volleyball part about it with, for DOA. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of like dating, dating sim style stuff well, in that game. So it's like it, if you're an American, you're not you going to get it. <laughs> although, although, Jap- although Japan's in its own little, Japan's its own little bubble where you see you see the worst of not like not like a magnified uh, self-serving well, culture, it, but like. You, in yeah. Japan, they fuzz out porn, like actual porn. That's, that, but they but porn. they can drive yeah, or they can draw all the porn that's, they want. That, that, like that, that's it, not... Well, no, not a, not really. Their their hentai is kind of weird Who's... too. They actually have to censor certain certain uh, genitalia. I'm um, so, sorry. That's actually that's actually our fault. The U.S. Impl- imposed like a uh, decency clause after World War Two. So somebody froze. I bet it froze me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see, we're still in beta, and Kent likes to freeze and then talk about how he froze. He looks fine to me. Yeah, yeah, he, he was fine to every. He was fine to everyone but him. Me. And yeah, there you go. All right, so um, so moving on from the whole GamerGate thing because that's uh, I think something we could all throw opinions on for for you do, hours. You could, you could do five episodes on GamerGate. <laughs> but we didn't get to this part. Damn. <laughs> Well, you know that happens. Um, so we, uh, we 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 in Diamond Club. I'm just going to cut to the to the next next topic that I put in the show notes. In Diamond Club, there is a survey going on so that we can gather some votes for uh, podcast awards later on this year. Woo. And uh, it, it's a, it's a tough fight. It's it's a very tough fight in the particular category that this podcast is appearing in. Um. We are up against, as far as Diamond Club goes, we're up against the jury podcast in the mature category. Now, this is mature. There's not enough swearing in this. This needs more swearing. Cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Think I got them all. Yes, high five. There we go. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we are. We uh, we we. If you're if watching the show and you uh, you think you enjoy it, cruise on over to yolo420.com slash hat voting and uh it'll bring up a little screen you just scroll down about halfway down it's a mature category and kick us a vote and it'd be uh be amazing of you we'd really appreciate it in the entertainment category (laughs) since you're on your way down to the mature category you can go ahead and put your uh radial dot in the number one slot for my so-called 8-bit life (laughs) there you go a a podcast which ash is the producer for yes (laughs) Yeah. So I got I have to kind of pimp it out because yes. I I help it I do stuff for it. Hey, one <laughs> one, one thing I have learned is if you don't pimp it, nobody else will. Yep. Hashtag eight bit left twenty sixteen. Pimp it easy. Hashtag <laughs> ritual misery twenty sixteen. <laughs> well, yeah, it the, is there, a different there, category. There is a third uh, a third podcast in our category, but apparently they it's. It's a hopeful thing, if if anything, because they haven't uh, haven't really done a whole lot with it. So well, you have to have oh. ten episodes. Oh, that, 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 oh, that year, sucks. You right? also gets all of our best friends are in here. Yeah. 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 That's uh. <laughs> but meanwhile, we're also going to say uh, also go for Hell Hell Juku and, and uh, two nerdy black guys. Nerdy black guys. They're in the culture. <laughs> yes, Fanny Pack <Black> Wrestling <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me laugh. But... <laughs> 
Okay. And then we have to go Every... for all the part of I'm... nominations. I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I get all my clients in, so let's... <laughs> Chris has done the album, the, the co- logos, album yeah. art for the podcasts that we've mentioned. <laughs> There we go, and now we have uh, fully adjusted to kick Kent out of the conversation because apparently he doesn't want to come back. He said Skype had a meltdown. Uh, Kent oh, has Skype. meltdown. <laughs> that's that's all Kent. I hope he's listening oh. right now. He has meltdowns. Everything's fine except Kent, for Kent. If you need help, call 555-806-359. It's fine. You'll fix it by the time you're out of beta. Well, <laughs> doubt it. So, um, well, we're hearing that he doesn't—he shouldn't be coming back anyway. So screw him. Oh, wait, he's gonna take his mead with him. <laughs> oh, there's that. So you have to kind of like him a little longer. Mm-hmm. There is that. Okay. So, well, guys, is there anything else that you would like to bring up this week? Because the only other things we have in here are reliant on Kent showing up because he's his topics. There he is. Mr. Right, Mr. Mr. Meltdown himself that didn't actually melt down, he suicided himself out of the conversation. What? Yeah, you were fine. <laughs> see, that's weird. Everything was frozen from what I could see. Everything was frozen, and then Skype just, like, stopped. Like, everything stopped. Yeah. Did you get the swirly blue disc yes. of fail? Yes, I got the disc of fail. And you had a task manager to, to yes. kill it? Yeah, I did. And then, and then Explorer.exe decided to die, so you had to kill that and reboot it. Well, I'm on a Mac, so if Explorer.exe is on my computer... There's that, your problem. Oh. That might be the problem. <laughs> hey, man. I rock both sides. I don't care. Right. <laughs> also, um, you should have corrected uh, me that it's not Task Manager. It's a... Uh, well, I knew what you It's meant. Activity thought... Monitor. It's Activity Monitor. Is that what it's called? Yes. It's called Activity I know what it's Monitor. Called. You're welcome. <laughs> You learn something new every day. It's called the force quit scene. Force quit. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so where did we leave off? Uh, <laughs> right where you where should be talking you about UFOs. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I don't know if you guys heard about this. So Hillary Clinton's campaign manager did an interview yesterday with I don't know, some some news talking head show, and he believes that it's time to tell America the truth about those things, those unidentified things that have been flying around our skies and the secret alien things that have been going on at Area 51. To quote him, he says, the American people can handle the truth. Wow. He used to be on uh, Bill Clinton, President Clinton's staff, and now Mm -hmm. he's running Hillary's campaign and, uh, so this is what he's talking about. So is this an issue? Is this something that um, is, does America need to know the truth? I mean, I don't if depends what the truth is. I mean, is, is, is the truth aliens? Is the truth like that military? Hillary, Cl- Hillary Cl- Clinton isn't an alien. No. Oh. <laughs> that, would, that, uh, that would explain Bill everything. Clinton might be an alien. I don't know. No. I saw his face. I, I think the I think. I think uh, the U.S. and the world knows the truth. I just think that some people don't want to don't want to believe it. Yeah, uh, and what's the truth? The, 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 we have not had contact with anyone outside of our solar system. Period. Dot. In in end of story. We haven't found anything inside our solar system. Um, and it, like Stephen Hawking, <laughs> as as Stephen Hawking said, we don't want to because if they can find us, they can kill this us. This is a bigger controversy than Gamergate. Right. Same. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious that because usually you find this stuff on the the conspiracy theory boards and you know yeah. uh, above, so, above, above top dot com or something. Yeah. This was <laughs> last night. This was the third headline from the top. I was like, what the hell is this? So I had to put it in the show notes and talk about it. I, I, that is, it's just so funny to me. I'm, I'm actually curious now. Look, what they really wanted to know is that polygamy is everywhere. <laughs> hey, what? No, I don't know. Oh, wow. What? what, what? Whoa. <laughs> they're, they're not UFOs. No, it's I both. agree. Polygamy is everywhere, but um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I was kind of touting it to Bill Clinton's, you know, uh, it, well, that, that, would, that, that would be, uh, it wouldn't be polyamory. 
No, well, no, polyamorous is, would be a whole, it would probably qualify, but it doesn't qualify here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, they can have no, you know, they're people, they're human, they Tell can do whatever do they want. They're also America. old people now, so they can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> <laughs> they're just happy someone's wanting to do something. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, she's having her campaign. He's kind of by himself. No, he's he's yelling at Black Lives Matter people. Yeah. Oh, that he. Yeah, that, that did happen the other day. So. <laughs> yeah. So okay, if so, if the truth was though that there are, that we have been visited by aliens and like the whole Roswell incident from the '40s was legit, like how it's portrayed as alien visitors crashed, etc. Mm -hmm. If that was indeed the truth, are we ready to hear that truth? No, probably Everybody. not. Probably not. Because we can't no. even get our own house in order, let alone accept visitors. Right. <laughs> Right. It, 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 it's it's an old joke where aliens find Earth and it's like, are they threatened? No, the the weapons are pointed the wrong way. <laughs> we can't even get people to take care of them damn selves. Yeah, right. We like can't how... even take care of AIDS. Like, damn it. Yeah. yeah, I said it. But do you do you think it would be a do you think it's possible that it would be a uniting issue though? Like um, like think Independence Day or um, nope. Yeah, exactly, cool. exactly. Think United, Independence Day. United have, no, no. have to think about all those people on the rooftops in Independence true. Day. Yeah, true. Like, yeah, it would be exactly like abduct Independence me. Day. Abduct me. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. People, people, people still argue, argue about the moon landing. They could announce, they like, could announce it with proof and show the damn alien body, and there would be conspiracy theories for the next you know, 100 years still. It yeah, wouldn't absolutely. matter. There are people yeah, right. arguing absolutely. the flatness of the Earth or again. Yes. What? Still. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, not still. Again. The flat. The flat it's Earth different. Society. Yes. That's. Yeah. That's a thing. That's fucking can moronic. Put, can we make their heads flat too? Because that. Cool. <laughs> Look, I, I watched the uh, the launch this morning of the of the rocket, huh? of the uh, yes, SpaceX yes. rocket. Oh um, yes. I watched that live during uh, DTNS this morning. Well, yeah. this afternoon for y'all. And uh, I gotta tell you, that was some pretty spectacular shit. Um, Especially when it, when the uh, the stage one part of it landed back on the barge out in the middle of the water, yes. I'm telling you, man, it looked fake. It looked fake as fuck. It looked absolutely <laughs> fake. I'm not saying it was CG. fake. I'm saying it, it, it totally looked like, CG. yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you know the uh, the the like the early video games where it showed the like the CG and come in and the thing was just like, Shh, doop, perfect landing. Like that. That's exactly what it looked like. Well, yeah, what what I was thinking it looked like, you remember the old, old cartoons, like the, the old Bugs Bunny shows from like the 60s and stuff, where they would they would go to the moon on a rocket or, or mm, whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they, would always, and they, would, uh, they would always land the rocket just like that. They would always fly to the moon and then, then land on its ass See, and then take off and fly to Earth. Right. And land on... Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, ah, that's so crazy. That can never happen, but it but happened. The future, again, the future is sneaking up on us, and it's like, we won't even realize it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we got we, smart we are... car, we got self-driving cars, rockets that can sort of land on bullseyes. What's next? <laughs> Predicting tornadoes. Yeah, yeah it, it didn't land perfectly centered. I'll give it that. It did not land perfectly centered. Oh, yeah. But, oh, but the landing yeah. oh, was... it was a mission failure. <laughs> the landing was smoother yeah. than butter, man. It was, uh, yeah. 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 It was yeah, insane. It didn't tip over. Come yeah, on. it didn't even That's wobble. Like it didn't, it didn't budge. It just, boop, stop. Yep, yep. And yeah, yeah. No? yeah. <laughs> yeah I just... Go ahead, Ken. Speak your mind. See what you got. Podcast. We're all friends here. <laughs> just, just you, me. No, uh... I point, no, I was just gonna point out that like all of the components had already been there. Like they, they'd already landed on land. Uh, they've attempted the barge landing before, which they almost did. But it this just kind of was off theory. center, and then it fell into the water. And this was just kind of the culmination. All of the pieces lined up, and it worked perfectly. I, this, this and, and again, and, and most people, like most people, are skeptical. It's like, don't bug me until it works. It's like, but like all those little steps were necessary for this. And and Absolutely. you know, you don't you don't get that without all the failures in front of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yep. Even though it, people people don't care about the in between though, they're just yeah. like, you know, just let me know what happens because it's kind of cool, but I don't want to be disappointed. People people remember that we landed on the moon. They don't remember all the explosions and accidents that happened before people that. People who died before yeah. that too. Yeah. <laughs> and afterwards. Right. And monkeys and dogs and Russians and. I think there was a monkey that got that they, that monkey never came back, right? No. That dog didn't come back either. They no. but they didn't send a cat up there because they know. They, yeah. The they don't talk <laughs> about. Oh jeez. Um. Yeah. <laughs> they know they that have, the cat was the mastermind have. behind all <laughs> that could be true that could be true mm -hmm. so uh so just to show how beta we are i just tried to cut over to the video the the youtube video of the launch this morning mm -hmm. and right as i cut over i realized that that was the previous launch <laughs> oh, oh, good job. doing what i can here making magic happen oh Ain't boy even mad bro <laughs> it's not very good magic but it's magic <laughs> Hey, hey, it's more than you can do. That's, that's, that's the, hey, uh, I can I can make Skype work uh, three out of five times. <laughs> yeah, half the time works every time, right? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, All right, boy. so um, hey. so it, we have reached that point of, of our podcast that I, I really enjoy making fun of because it's one of those necessary parts, but... Um, everybody hates it. Like it's universally hated by all podcasters everywhere. Um, Is but it, I don't know. that being said, I enjoy the part where I get to ask you, where can people find more of you and your outlandish ideas of serenity and happiness in the world? <laughs> oh, or Seren other things. Well, well yes. serenity kind of blew up <laughs> in the end. Hey, spoilers. <laughs> hey, <Whatever. laughs> It's it's we on Netflix. It's that. not a spoiler anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Hashtag watch for life. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can go first. Uh, I'm at Chris Ronan on Twitter and also ChrisRonan.com. Point you right there for now. I have I have a couple products that I'm working on. Yeah. Nothing big right now. Uh, and I'm at Archu. That's A R T S E H U. Uh, I tweet about stuff and things. I also stream video games. I'm a cat. I don't know. Can we, can we switch to the cat face? Huh? Give me what? Switch to the cat face? I don't know. Do you want to screen share it? <laughs> screen share doable? Dun, dun, dun. I, I just want to make sure it's cool. Um, Shit's getting real. Wait, I don't want to share my I'm going to share a window. There we go. Yeah. Oh, the magic's going to be spoiled. It's going to be spoiled. These, these are my favorite parts of the podcast because these there come we out go. really it's, well on the audio version. Yeah. I know, right? great you can describe what it looks like oh look the mouth moves and everything yeah mm -hmm. so this is snowshoes twitter profile pic she probably sort uses of. it elsewhere there we go oh uh, well, yeah like it's kind of like a half i guess i don't know <laughs> well um, right now i'm wearing a fez hat version. oh it, well yes a fez hat and <laughs> it's animated the point where the the mouth mm -hmm. is articulated and it moves mm -hmm. which... <laughs> it's so odd yeah it also does lasers. Yeah, I'm trying to turn the light. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. There's lasers. Look at oh all those lasers. Oh, my God. It's a cat with lasers. Yeah. That's, it's it's lasers vomiting lasers. That's amazing. Laser beans out of my mouth. You can thank Blender MF for that one. Yeah, the, this is originally oh my started God. off with Blender MF. Okay, okay, Good Chris. Chris, anytime that screen is up, you have to not talk because it's just throwing me off like really bad. <laughs> If you're listening to the audio version of this, you need to go to YouTube yes. or RitualMisery.com and or you can just come, the video version of this. Or just come watch me on Twitch. That's uh, twitch.tv slash snowshoe. Is there something disturbing about my voice coming out of a cute cat face? Yes. The, yeah. the entire the entire <laughs> point of it changes. Like It goes from this cute little cat with laser stuff out of its mouth to... To this Twitch demonic, like, like what is wrong? Like, yeah, this like blocky, like big raw mouth is going to eat you. You, you, you know those? I'm sorry. You, you know those pictures that you can look at at one aspect and it's fine, and then you look at it from a different aspect and it looks completely different. Like you're, you know, you, you, instead of seeing a a, a a horse's head, you're now seeing an old lady looking off to the other side or something like that. That's what this reminds me of when, well, when Chris Swan, talks. And then there's like the pretty lady, I think. That's one yes, of the options. Well. Yeah. But, but yeah. But, you know what's also scary is when it becomes like this, and I decide to become Satan. <laughs> oh my God. Diablo I think I'm having. Like this. 
Uh, Man, I'm wrong with my Skype again. Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was awesome. So, it only goes one one level though. I don't I don't have enough variation. This sounds like Diablo in a slightly higher Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <coughs> nice. All right, so uh, so I found that landing. Oh, yeah. oh, well, yeah, we so, watch that real quick? yeah. So I'm gonna oh, go ahead okay. and shoot that out there real quick. I guess we're not done yet. We'll have to do that all over again. Well, cut, cut, cut it out. Head. Cut it out. Yeah. We'll we'll do edit in post. Edit in post. <laughs> we always fix it in post. So there you go. Or we don't. Like it's just this perfect little landing. Dunk. Like, like uh, I'm, I'm, uh, look at, I just, I just don't get it. Like, I, it's so amazing to me that they actually did this. It's lots and lots of math. <laughs> <laughs> math. Life is math. Life is math. Yeah. I see. I could never land a rocket like that because I, I suck at math. So yeah. Well, first you have to let you have to have the rocket go in the air first. So <laughs> let that's a whole set of that's other. That's a whole other. Yeah, that's other. And math. then you have the math of it being in the air, and then the math of it coming down. It, it was <laughs> actually really cool because watching it on live uh, uh, online on the I think the NASA website had all the telemetry and everything else, so you could see how fast it was going, how high it was. And at the bottom, they had this little thing where it was like a timeline and it showed you all the markers, like you know, stage one deployment or stage one separation, you know, um, uh, stage two start. And it, it just went through all the little processes and they hit all of them right on time. Now, I don't know how much timer versus, you know, somebody actually manipulating that saying, OK, we're doing this now or whatever. But it was really cool. Just the whole presentation of it. It, it was awesome. I enjoyed it. Yep. And not even, I'm not even a big SpaceX guy, but I, I thought it was really cool. Science. Yep. You know, it was a it was a great advancement. This was um it was a milestone for sure. So yeah. um so people can find me on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche, or if you are a beer enthusiast like me, you can go to ratebeer.com and find me what, username Del Noche. What about our guests? Where where can people find them? Like oh. you trounced right over it. Yeah, did we do that right? What? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Actress Wait. Ronan. Um, fix and post. What? <laughs> fix and post. There's no post on this show. <laughs> no, they were talking about how they wanted to do it again, but uh, but you just went right through it instead of kicking it back over to them. So I'm good. No, no more kitty right. kitty laser mouth thing. Unless they have something <laughs> to you know something that they had didn't mention already. Uh, no. There's Twitter and Twitch and listen to Ape It Life and stuff. <laughs> And go yeah, vote. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're covered. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Where are you at, Amos? <laughs> I'm in my dorm. <laughs> uh, he doesn't leave. He just sits in the hallway all the time. I, I, <laughs> so that's outside. <laughs> the hallway is outdoors. Yeah. I, I, I haven't actually been out of my apartment in the last 24 hours. Uh, like, there's no point. I had food here. I, I, I did my little workout here. I'm about to go run later on today, so I didn't do that this morning. Just gonna jog um, in place, like jog up and down the hallway. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go run the stairs actually. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a eight, it's an eight story building. It's inside, but it's eight stories, so there's plenty of well, stairs. Well, oh, that's eight, that's air, that's air control. Like that's that's cheating. Gotta yeah, but it's it's 68 degrees outside. It's actually probably warmer in here than it is out there. Mm. Yeah. It's not that cold. Yeah. 68. You're right. Yeah. But but it's like it's like 80. You're gonna eight. be running. You're gonna be running. It's yeah. 60. Yeah. Some people don't know about cold weather. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's not a matter of it being cold. I, I'm, I'm, it's like like I think you've completely misunderstood the whole temperature I don't, reference. I don't know. I think yeah. you're saying that you're a you're a temperaturist. I am. I hate hot weather, and it's like 88 degrees in the dorm. I don't know if you can see my my head sweating. So yeah. me running in the dorm is actually going to be harsher than running outside. Ah. Yep. Ah. So there's that. Oh, and uh, apparently somewhere it's raining. Rain. Yeah, it's in Alamogordo. It is pouring. It is holy cow. So you're getting yeah. your annual, like your rain annual rainfall is happening today. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting half of it today. <laughs> oh man. So uh, so yeah, you can find me at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Um, follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. All that other happy horse stuff. Uh, 
Cruise on over to ritualmisery.com. You can find links to everything. This show, previous shows, videos, other random stuff. You can find ways to get t-shirts. Um, and somebody just ordered another t-shirt. Like, seriously. Thank you yeah, so I much. That. Awesome. That's yes, awesome. Thanks. Like, we're selling, we're selling t-shirts at a record rate. Like, one a week. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> oh, hey. I have a Is store. it that high? That's right. Oh. We're all about that. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> I sell posters and stuff. <laughs> See, that was the stuff. I knew I was really <laughs> well, Where can people I find your store? Uh, it's Ash Shoe Store. So it's like ashshoe.tumblr.com slash store. Or we will... bit.ly or bit yeah. slash buttons and stuff. Tony, edit this in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will, <laughs> we will include links to all of your guys' stuff in the show notes. If yeah, we will. be so kind to... Throw in Drop the show them dog. in the show notes. We will put them in the like official. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that way people can find your stuff. Pimping ain't easy. We need your help. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, so you can submit yeah. ideas to our show at uh at our subreddit reddit dot what is it reddit dot ritual misery. No, no, no. Damn it. <laughs> Screwing it up again, aren't I? RitualMisery.reddit.com. RitualMisery.reddit.com. God, see, it would have been so much easier if I just did that right the first time. <laughs> or we but, could be like jury and say it both ways every single time. Reddit.com slash r slash ritual misery. As soon as I say something that's not relevant to it, to the average user, like the slash r, I, I'm lost. Like, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I give up. So, um... You can call and leave us a voicemail. Uh, actually, yeah, you can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Man, that was difficult today. This whole show's just been difficult today. Like, I don't understand. I'm dying here. Oh, well. We're and uh, you can also email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Uh, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for Chris, for Ash, and for you... This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Oh, you went early. Yeah. See, I jumped the gun. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, totally wow. so including that. <laughs> totally including so, that. <laughs> so apparently we're not just having rain, we're having hail and lightning. Oh, congratulations. Oh, wow. It's like you're in Texas.